Hi, we are delighted to welcome today Mikola Stetenko, who is the managing partner at Avelum, a leading law firm here in Ukraine. Mikola, it is great to see you. How are you doing? Thank you, Eddie, for inviting. We're doing well. Uh, it's been an interesting year for us as well as for many other people, but so far so good. Uh, touch wood, we survived it quite well and actually learned a lot from this uh, interesting experience. Uh, and I think we're now much better and ready to, for future challenges. So, so tell us, I mean, what, what has happened in the last 230 days, you know, in, in a law firm? How, how are you working differently? Well, first of all, a, a few things that are really obvious for everyone. And we really found that technology and investment into, into technology is really crucial and important. And uh, we're happy that we have invested heavily into it. Um, the, the, the value of people uh, that, that we have is, is crucial uh, in any business, but especially in our business. And we really kind of felt that this was uh, acute to us. Uh, communication, uh, also obvious thing, it, 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 it turned out to be really important to speak to people, to communicate to people, and I think we still can do more even now, but um, uh, at least we're doing uh, the basic minimum that, that is, um, we, we used to do in the office, uh, you would meet people, but now you need to do it quite often online. So, and the, uh, and the office use is, uh, we, we are now rethinking uh, how, we, how we can use our office and what we need, what we don't need. But these are the obvious things that everyone kind of um, had in their minds. What is less obvious to us? Well, first thing, um, we actually grew uh, through this crisis. Um, we, we, have, we had some restructuring, some uh, part of our team restructured into a separate uh, law firm, but at the, at the same time, we actually got uh, 10 more people uh, through internship. We really saw that looking um, strategically into, into long term, um, you, you have to invest into people, you uh, have to invest into future development of the business, and it's really important to help from the social perspective, to help students who just graduated to find that job. So we decided to continue our internship program, uh, which was a bit strange because it was in the middle of the lockdown, so uh, not many people were in the office, but we managed and we, um, we got a healthy bunch of uh, 10 uh, uh, new um, junior attorneys who passed successfully through internship. Um, and I hope they will pass through uh, the rest of the program and will become proper associates with us. Um, we, it was a surprise to us as well that we were actually quite ready for the, in terms of technology, uh, to do this online. We've been doing the remote desktops for, for years, but um, when you do it uh, occasionally, that's one thing. When you do it uh, on, a, on a daily basis, that's another thing. But it, it turned out to be that, that we were quite, quite prepared. And, and um, another thing that um, I call it lockdown legalized um, the webinars. Um, if you remember, um, uh, the technology was there for, for, for quite a while. Uh, we could do webinars, all of us, uh, on a regular basis, but we didn't. We preferred live meetings with, with clients, with colleagues. And, um, but now, uh, with the lockdown, uh, everyone is into webinars. And I actually think there are a lot of uh, advantages to it. It doesn't mean that you don't have to do live meetings. It's important. But actually, when you do educational webinars, educational uh, breakfast as we used to do, it's actually, it saves a lot of time to our clients, to us, uh, and people find it really useful. And you can, you can record it and then send, it, uh, send the recording to, to our clients afterwards. Uh, and and people, people really like it. So, and, and the last, uh, less obvious thing for us is that uh, we reviewed our um, um, statistics um, and, and reporting processes, and we found that we can definitely do our statistics for the whole firm on a, on a weekly basis rather than on a monthly or quarterly basis. And um, it, it gave us the opportunity to feel the firm on, on a really almost daily basis. So um, I think uh, despite all the challenges, we uh, got out of the first part of the lockdown, at least uh, quite, quite strong and, and, um, uh, and healthy. So. Well, that, that's fascinating. I think what you mentioned about the interns, I think that that's just so good to hear that um, you, know, you are taking on the, the interns 
and uh, bringing them in straight straight from university. I think that, that that's a real sort of international practice program that we have seen across you know the UK and the US, and I think that's that's great to hear. But you know, in terms of, I mean, we always hear about the the, the challenges, um, but opportunities. I mean, what 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 have been the, been the key opportunities that you've seen sort of in the business? And then secondly, you know, this the, the fact that you're saying that you're already reviewing. The, the the office what, what, why do we need an office I think you know many many organizations are looking at this now and you know what what's your thing where, where are we going to be post covid I mean is this the new normal um yeah, I think it's definitely a new normal I, in terms of opportunities for, for clients nothing has we, we saw that there will be a lot of distressed m a but uh, as it turns out, what our clients did in April and May, they slowed down or put on hold their investment plans uh, and uh, decided to uh, take a wait and see approach. But then in June, July, and especially August, we saw that all those um, delayed transactions have been brought back and we had a really active summer. Uh, and um, so, so in terms of the number of transactions and the volume of transactions, we are back on track, and, and I even would say that in terms of the volume of transactions, the size of transactions uh, in the M&A market, for example, they are becoming bigger. Um, we see that uh, clients have also reshifted uh, the, the, the way they operate, and uh, most of them are uh, getting out of lockdown quite well. So in terms of opportunities for clients, we just uh, need to... to uh, go through that uh, low period in April and May and then be ready for, for, for the new challenges. In terms of um, other opportunities in terms of, uh, in, in our internal operations, uh, office, uh, office is a great example actually. I was thinking that we would, in two or three years, uh, the way we were growing, we would need to move to another office. Uh, and uh, now I'm looking back at this and thinking, well actually, given that we are working in, in a way, we, we don't have formal shifts, but we work in a way, in a shift, um, you we usually have 20 to 30 percent of all of our staff in the office at the same uh, at one time. You don't need a huge office anymore with cubicles, and in fact, you can reshuffle your office uh, easily. Uh, and you, you simply will say uh, to your people that you know what? Remember the lockdown? We all go for one month back to our homes. We work from there. In the meantime, we reshuffle our office. We do the new renovation. And in one month, you will come into the new office, but it will be in the same building. So uh, I, that, that's definitely an opportunity because we really like the, our location. We don't want to look for another place, et cetera. And we don't really need to expand that much in terms of office space. Fantastic. Good. So, so this series of videos is about leadership, leadership in times of crisis. What, what is leadership in times of crisis? I think it's... Um, uh, it's, it's all about communication, in my view. Uh, you need to really be open. Uh, you need to be honest with your people. And when, uh, like, in, in March, when all of this was starting, we, as many other businesses, did not know where it's going. Uh, we had to take some measures. We did not, we did not let go any people. We saw that uh, our people are extremely important. We're really proud of their skills and talents. We want to keep them. But we needed to restructure to go for a three or four day week. Uh, and we did it for some time, uh, but we actually then paid uh, later on the bonuses to compensate for those um, uh, cuts in compensation that we had. But um, we did not know what, what was going on. So we, we tried to be as honest as possible with our uh, people to explain to them that, uh, yes, it is a liquidity or cash management exercise for us. We, don't, we are trying to increase our results because we don't know what's over the horizon. But as soon as we, we figure things out, we will compensate, we will uh, return back to normal, and we are back to normal, except that we, we don't work as much from the office as we used to be. Uh, and I have actually a few tips um, uh, for, for employers and employees uh, based on our, um, uh, on our experience. I think we all have to invest into learning tools. Since we are now back at home, so working from home a lot, um, there is less opportunity to communicate in person, but there are so many even free tools uh, and or cheap, uh, inexpensive tools that uh, for learning both the soft skills and the hard skills, all sorts of webinars. Uh, we as em employers need to encourage our employees to uh, actually utilize that, that opportunity. And our employees should be prepared to do that, to do the self-learning. Self so we need to encourage people to self-educate. Another thing is, uh, it's, it, it may sound obvious, but 
we need to encourage people to switch to entrepreneurial uh, thinking um, because uh, we are going into a really unknown territory where we may end up as, many, as uh, service businesses to be working on a, uh, on a project basis when needed. Uh, and um, uh, this is really entrepreneurial and uh, people have to be start getting prepared for that. Uh, learn what is my microeconomics uh, and uh, how the company operates uh, early on from their career. Um, the, another thing is to automate as many processes as possible. It's not only about technology, it's not only about uh, business work, it's about automation because clients, especially in this, um, in this lockdown, require even more efficiency. They expect you to be available 24 seven. They expect you to pull out a template really quickly and to spend as less time as, as possible on, on the new sign. So that's a challenge for us as law firms to any service business, in fact. But um, the, the technology tools are available uh, and you just have to invest into them. Uh, so um, I think um, we're, going, we're going in the right direction. That's wonderful. And the final question, what would your one message be to the members of the American Chamber of Commerce in Ukraine? I saw you would ask about that. Uh, my message is plan for the recovery. The recovery will come for sure. It's around the corner. And when it comes, we need to be ready with people ready, with processes ready, um, with our offices ready, because it will be booming. Brilliant. Well, thank you. Thank you, uh, Mikola Stasenko, uh, managing partner at Avellum, leading law firm here in Ukraine. Thank you for everything you do to support um, the members of the American Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for your active involvement and your great team on the, the committees and uh, making Ukraine a better place um, where to do business. But in order to do that, you need great lawyers. So thank you for, for everything you do. Stay, you. stay safe and um, I hope to see you soon. Thank you.